In this video, I want to provide an example as to how one goes about choosing a suitable likelihood for a given situation. And the example that we're going to be talking about here is going to be to do with ordering of beers. So we're going to suppose that we work or we manage a pub and the characteristic which we observe is the amount of time between consecutive orders of beer from the bar. And so we record some data which looks something like this and each of these represents a time in minutes between consecutive orders of beer. And let's suppose that this is on a fairly busy time on a Friday evening. So a question we might have in running this bar might be, how many staff do we need? And the way in which we might go about answering this question might be to develop a model for beer waiting times. This might be a little bit of an extreme example for which to develop a statistical model, uh, given that there are probably simpler rules of thumb than developing a statistical model. But anyway, let's run with it. So in order to develop this model for beer waiting times, what we need is we first of all need some set of assumptions. And these are going to be embodied by our model. So to begin with, what we might do is we might assume that the orders of beer occur independently. So the probability of one individual ordering a beer over the next time interval does not depend on whether someone else orders a beer over that interval. Of course, if individuals tend to congregate in groups as they do in pubs, then they might tend to go to the bar together and hence beers would then not be ordered independently. But to make our life simple for now, let's assume that beers are being ordered independently. Secondly, let's assume because we're talking about a given evening, a busy evening, Friday evening, let's assume that the rate at which beers are ordered is constant throughout the course of the evening. Then what we need to do to choose a suitable probability model which encompasses both of these assumptions is we might sort of look this up in some sort of book or, or on the internet and we would find that the exponential distribution is the continuous distribution that satisfies both of these properties that I've mentioned previously. So mathematically, how would we write this? Well, we'd write that the time for data point i, where i is sort of going from 1 up to n, so we record sort of n waiting times, is being distributed exponentially and the exponential distribution just has one parameter, which is typically called lambda. And lambda is a rate parameter. In this example, it would represent the number of beers that are ordered per minute on average. What does the probability density function look like for an exponential distribution? Well, it looks like P of, of Ti given lambda is equal to lambda times e to the power minus lambda ti. What does this distribution look like? Well, the idea is we can draw the probability density function for different values of lambda. So the, the horizontal axis here is just the time interval. And the vertical axis here is the probability density. You can read that. OK, so the idea here is that what we might have is we might start off with lambda being equal to 1, say, and lambda equal to 1 might look something like that. Then if we were to increase the rate at which beers are ordered, then what we would find then is that the distribution would shift to the left. So for lambda equals 2, we might get a distribution something like this mauve line which I'm drawing here. The reason it's shifted to the left is because if more beers are being ordered per unit time, then the waiting time between beers being ordered is smaller on average. And obviously if you went the other way and we just decreased the value of lambda, then we might obtain a distribution that looks something like this yellow line here. And that might be, for example, the case where lambda is equal to a half. Where lambda equals a half really means that a beer on average is being ordered every two minutes. 
Okay, so what are the properties of this distribution? Well, the idea is that we could work out the mean waiting time. So this would be the expected value of ti conditional on lambda. So we're assuming that we know lambda. In that case, you actually find that the mean waiting time is equal to one over lambda. And that makes perfect sense because for example, if lambda is equal to two, in other words, two beers on average are being ordered every minute, then the amount of waiting time on average that you would wait would be one over two. In other words, a beer would be being ordered every 30 seconds. In the next video, I'm gonna go through maximum likelihood estimation for this particular example.